Hello, and welcome to this demonstration of Language Portability Solutions COBOL to C Sharp Migration Technology. If you've already viewed our COBOL to C Sharp demonstration video, then you know how our technology can transform a legacy COBOL application into C Sharp using the latest MVC and .NET technologies. If not, we invite you to view it on our website at www.cobaltocs.com. In this video, we will demonstrate the steps necessary to deploy a migrated application to the cloud using Microsoft Azure. If you have previously viewed our demonstration video, then you are already familiar with our web transaction server called the TX server and the various components that make up the migrated application. Before we look at how these applications can be deployed to the cloud, let's take a moment to briefly review the architecture. The TX server consists of a base class and controller that manage the interactions between the views, models, and application programs that make up the migrated system. When the application was migrated, BMS maps were automatically converted to MVC views with corresponding models. These models bind the data from the views in order to make it available to the application programs. The TX server controller invokes the application programs and passes them the data from the appropriate model via a WCF web service. This separation of function allows for unlimited scalability and also provides numerous deployment options, some of which we will now describe and demonstrate. We begin our discussion with a simple video rental system that was converted from COBOL to C Sharp by our migration technology. This application was converted with no manual intervention required. In general, our migration technology can automatically convert 99.9% .9 of all COBOL code. If we run the application on a local server, we can see how the maps were converted using a basic 3270 style sheet. The application has the familiar look and feel of a mainframe application with menus, browses, and update functions. Here's an example of a simple browse through the video file. Now we will move application deployment from the local server to the cloud by publishing it to Azure. Because the architecture of our TX server and the MVC models and views adheres to native MVC and .NET conventions, this deployment is easily accomplished using the built-in capabilities of Visual Studio. When directed to publish the application to Azure, Visual Studio will build the deployment package and, using the Azure profile that I previously downloaded, place it in our Azure website. We also created a Windows Azure SQL database so we can run the application in the cloud. Once deployment is complete, Visual Studio will automatically enter the URL of our Azure website into a browser, which will take us to the home page. As you can see, the Azure website presents the same menu we saw on the locally deployed application, and the same browse looks and functions identically in the cloud as it did on the local server. Earlier I mentioned that the application was initially converted using a basic 3270 style sheet. Since the BMS maps are now MVC views, they can be easily given a more web-like look and feel. In addition, more extensive modifications can be made using HTML helpers and Razor functions. Let's change the look and feel of this application and redeploy it to Azure. Now you can see that the application no longer resembles a mainframe terminal application, but has a more modern, web-like appearance. The deployment model we previously viewed publishes the entire application as an integrated Azure website, as shown here. In this model, all parts of the application, user interface, business logic, and database accesses, are deployed in the cloud. However, that is not the only deployment architecture that our converted applications support. Often a company may wish to expose the user interface via the cloud, but execute the business logic and database accesses on a secure server located within the enterprise, as illustrated here. Because of our use of a WCF web service to separate the TX server, models, and views from the application programs, this architecture can be easily supported. Let's take a look at how that happens. 
When the TX server controller needs to call an application program, it first creates an instance of the class in our web service that exposes the operations contracts available to the client. When creating this instance, the controller also supplies the name of the binding that will be used to communicate with the web service. The binding name is specified in a configuration file so that it can be easily changed to accommodate different bindings. In this example, you can see two bindings, HTTP and TCP. By setting the configuration file value to one of the binding names, the controller and the web service will automatically communicate via that protocol. Thank you for watching this video describing cloud deployment using Microsoft Azure. We hope you agree that our COBOL to c -sharp migration technology is the fastest way to go from COBOL to the cloud. For more information and videos, please visit the brochures and videos section of our website at www.cobaltocs.com. Goodbye for now.